The world of algebraic structures can be a daunting one. With many names describing at first glance similar structures, it is easy to get lost in a maze of definitions. By taking you with me on a short trip, I hope to lay a clear path that will both allow you to internalize the definitions as well as open you up to the possibilities that those structures offer. More specifically, you will learn how to define magmas, semigroups, monoids, groups, abelian groups, rungs, rings, commutative rings, fields. That may sound like a lot, but as you'll see, each of those names will be nothing but a small step on our journey to the field. You already know at least two fields, the field Q of rational numbers and the field R of real numbers, both taken with addition and multiplication. It might be useful to keep those in mind, and you can check in your head some of the properties as we go along. In the following story, each stop that we will make along the way will be an added property to our structure, and the name of the territory in which our stop is describes the name of said structure. Therefore, each stop will make the objects that inhabit the territories less general, or in other words, more specific. Let's begin. Your journey starts in the territory of sets. Looking around, all you can see are sets. Some contain bananas and elephants, others have numbers and red shoes. They can contain everything you can imagine, and even more. That is because sets are a simple abstraction human beings like to use to talk about a collection of objects as a whole. For the vast majority of them, their elements don't interact with each other, so that nothing is happening inside of them. Let's change that by leaving the set territory for our first stop called binary operation. The sets you see here don't look that much different as far as their elements go. However, something is happening inside of them. Every two elements can now interact with each other, combining into another one. You've now entered the territory of magmas. A binary operation on a set X is a particular kind of function that assigns to an ordered pair of elements of X a third element of X. When we say ordered pair, it means that one of the elements comes first, the other second, and if we change the order, we may get a different result. This is not a very abstract idea. Just think of the difference between undressing and then taking a shower, as opposed to taking a shower and then undressing. A magma is a set with a well-defined binary operation. Note that nothing is required of a binary operation so that there are lots of them. For instance, we could send any two elements to our favorite element in X. In fact, any definition is allowed. But in order to reach the field, there is only one way you can go. We will call this binary operation the addition, whose terminus station will be in the territory of a billion groups. Following this line, your first stop is associativity. You have now entered the territory of semigroups. But what is associativity? Suppose that we have a set X with a binary operation. Let's call this operation star and write A star B for the element that star associates to the ordered pair AB. Suppose we have three elements A, B, C and suppose we want to use star to obtain a new element out of these three without changing their order. This is feasible, but we will have to use the operation twice. First compute A star B, then use the result to compute A star B star C. Actually, there is another computation that we could consider. We could first compute b star c, then use the result to compute a star b star c. There is no guarantee that these two expressions describe the same element of x. In the very special case that a star b star c equals a star b star c for all a, b and c in x, we say that the binary operation star is associative. Note that this means that the brackets are not necessary since both expressions lead to the same result. To rephrase what we've done so far. For our magma to also be a semigroup, we need the binary operation to also be associative. The introduction of a second property for our binary operation brings us to the territory of monoids via the neutral element. All the sets here have at least one element called the neutral element. In some ways, it is lazy, as it does nothing to the elements with whom it interacts. 
If we call E such an element of a set M with the binary operation star, then for every A in M, A star E equals E star A equals A. Note that we require both A star E equals A and E star A equals A because no property of star so far guarantees that A star E equals E star A. Our third property allows us to enter the territory of one of the most famous structures, groups. Our first stop there is called inverse element. Where before I said that we had an element which was in some way lazy, we now observe that everyone's elements can be made lazy. More formally, taking a group G with the binary operation, we now require that for every A in G, there exists an A prime such that a plus A prime equals A prime plus A equals E. In some way, A prime is a sort of doppelganger of A with respect to the plus operation. Now, the last station of this line, commutativity. Here, it doesn't matter in which order you make the elements interact with each other. For all elements A, B in our set, A plus B equals B plus A where commutativity is about the order of the elements not mattering, associativity is about the order of the operations not mattering, or more precisely, the order in which the operations are carried out. We might have reached the end of the line, but our journey is not yet over. In order to continue, we will need two operations on our set. If you remember from our visit in the magma territory, there are many binary operations that can be defined on one specific set. So we have many options, but we need to make them coexist in a meaningful way. Our choice and next stop is called distributivity. Given a set and given two binary operations, plus, times, distributivity holds if, for all elements, a times b plus c equals a times b plus a times c. We could think that A times is distributed to the two elements B and C in plus. Note that we don't require the plus to be distributed as well, which would mean A plus B times C equals A plus B times A plus C. Now we have a framework to combine any two binary operations, and if we wanted, by combining two abelian groups in that way, we could reach the field's territory immediately. There are a couple more stops along the way. We will follow a second line that we will call the multiplication line. Multiplication will be distributive with regards to addition, which means that a times b plus c equals a times b plus a times c. If a set is an abelian group with respect to addition, and at the same time a semigroup with respect to multiplication, we are in rung territory. Remember, this just means that multiplication is associative, if we also require the set to be a monoid with respect to multiplication, we give rung a 1, thus making it a roing, or rather, a ring. And finally, by making it an abelian group, we reach the field, or the end of our trip. There is however one problem that I didn't mention. Life sometimes is not fair. Imagine you have a set on which you have two binary operations, each satisfying the four properties required for it to be an abelian group, that is, associativity, existence of a neutral element, existence of inverses, and commutativity. If you want to make the two operations coexist by adding distributivity, you have to accept that one of your neutral elements won't have an inverse with respect to the other operation. As a convention, we usually say that it's the additive neutral element that is missing a multiplicative inverse. Therefore, a field consists of two abelian groups, x with the operation plus, and x minus 0 with the operation times that we make compatible using distributivity. Let's finish this video with a short proof to showcase how we can use the properties of these sets to understand them better. How many neutral elements can a monoid have? Let's say we have a monoid with two neutral elements E and E prime. Because E is neutral, we can add it to E prime and we get E prime as a result. Therefore, E prime equals E plus E prime. However, because E prime is neutral, we can also add it to E and we get E as a result. Therefore, E and E prime must be the same element. There can only be one neutral element. 
We have now reached the end of our story. In this video, we learned what associativity, existence of a neutral element, existence of inverses, commutativity, and distributivity are. We use these properties to give the definition of a magma, semigroup, monoid, group, rung, ring, commutative ring, and field. And it was all quite painless, so maybe life is mostly fair after all.